Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from... Story number one. How the human's fire is fueled. Written by Cal Bynes. They survive, tied to the burning pile of entropy. And somehow, while their body and minds burn, they live. Nobody truly understands the humans, and while I might be the closest, I sure don't either. Flipping the galaxy on its head in one fell swoop, I'm one of the ones who is assigned to figure out the question of how. How these humans do all they do. Here, in my observations, here's how the fire of a human is pure. My first experience was in battle. Not exactly my choice in this instance. It's how I ended up in this job, however. The planet just had stopped being assaulted with heavy orbitals, and their infantry was coming to begin cleaning us up. It was a small colony world. We knew we wouldn't be safe. We also knew that the Quals didn't often take prisoner, and those that day didn't weren't exactly treated well. Then a bright flash through the skies as a small ship jumped nearly into the atmosphere, careening into the ground, small boxes that came flying from them. Dust springing up at front of our position as one cracked open, Four humans peeping out. Reinforcements have arrived. Who's in charge here? The lead human said. You're insane. Our government can't spare any ships to you. You've just signed your own death, I said as I walked up to her. That's when I saw it. Something behind her eyes. A raging inferno barely contained. Busting at the edges of her eyes as she looked back at me. Your government can't, she said, a grin appearing on her face. We fought with them for the next four rotations. They were machines, some of them almost literally. One, losing their leg to an anti-tank explosive launcher. They just kept going. Every injury, every bit of hope, every soldier that fell, it was like it was absorbed into them, continuing on, dragging through the mud that felt like concrete. Concrete that had been hit enough to make it feel like mud. Eventually, we reached the base they had made. Filled with most of our people that were on the planet. They all had that same fire to them, that unending energy. Once we had gotten there, my ass that soldier, the one that first found me and my men. How? Aisha, how in the hell do you humans do it? I read your biological reports. They're above average, but not this, I said, gesturing all around to the base. She sat down next to me for a moment before answering. For us, sir. Uh, It's not about the body, not even about the mind as much. It's about your soul, that fire inside. Not all humans have got their fire fueled, because it's not just having the fire going. It's about making it thrive. It's about making sure that the fire inside you burns brighter than the world around you, she said, and it didn't answer any question right then. But before I could ask anything else, an alarm went off around the base. Aisha grabbed her gun and stood up before looking back at me. Tekken, make sure you add Kindle to your fire. I see the sparks. You'll find your fuel soon enough, she said with a smile and ran off to the vehicles. It was a little bit after the war. I'd been assigned to study the humans and I was on their earth. I had been given the opportunity to work and watch some of them throughout their days, spending a week or so with them. It was through this time that I really began to dive deep to the humans. The first was a blacksmith. Well, not exactly one of the more necessary jobs in modern times, it was an enlightening experience. I won't go too heavily into the everyday, just what I observed through his work. It was odd, though. In every piece, from knives to swords to simple sculptures, everything had a hint of him, part of his fire. For every tool in his shop, it radiated with him, and he also took on parts of them, too, both physically, his body adapting, developing strength, better grip, calluses from the tools, Mentally, he hardened, learned, every new tool growing with him and his craft, stronger, sturdier, taking with it the scarred and scuffed edges of his soul, purifying it like the metal he molded, beating it into shape, his pillows matching the banging of steel, fire coming from both him and the forge. It was a symbiotic relationship, in a way. The second person was a writer, and they were sort of the same. What they wrote, every character, every setting, parts of them littered within, but evolving past just them, 
And those parts, those characters, th those stories that evolved past him, they imprinted back onto him. Changes, ideas, stories coming from them, just the same was way that he had done to them. They were like symbiotic relationships, in a way. It was from those two mainly that I began to understand it. I understand this fire within the humans. It isn't as simple as a furnace or an engine, nor is it a raging flame that destroys everything it touches. It's almost like a purifier or a smoothing stone. It is a fire that refines. It is an all-encompassing warmth, and while it fuels, it doesn't destroy. It simply changes. It takes anything it touches, whether steel, stone, or sapient. It turns a weapon into a limb, an unknown species into a family, steel into art, and words into stories. It turns emotions into fuel. It turns a human into an unstoppable force. It turns other creatures into something that can truly live. It turned me into its own kindling. I met back up with Aisha a couple years later, me still studying humans, her still fighting like hell. A couple of limbs replaced, but still, that fire inside her. <laughs> My friend, it seems you found your fire then. So, do you understand us humans yet? She said, a hand going on to my shoulder. Hell no, I don't think I even you lot do, I responded with a chuckle. Damn straight. Let's share some stories then. Been a damn minute since Dunia, Aisha said, grabbing a box of drinks and carrying it over. I don't understand humans, but now I understand how they do it, how they fight against unthinkable odds, continue past every challenge. I understand the human flame. End of story. Story number two. Pax Humanum, written by Foxcorp. For countless millennia, humanity had scoured the stars. The Milky Way has been kept under close watch. There has been a significant lack of war, for their entire era of human universal dominion. We, the Hatclon, once ruled this galaxy with an iron fist. Now, we are the ones being crushed by the Neutronian group of human beats. For the past month, we've noticed an immense drop in human military presence within the Milky Way. Their communications and movements have been seemed frantic, almost panicked. There are rumors of rebellion outside the universal room. I, Telerius the Second, son of Telerius the Great, believe now is the time to reclaim our place, the stars. Sir, with all due respect, this is the human militarum we're talking about. They've destroyed entire galaxies with a mere thought of it before. They could decimate us within many seconds. Tyrellus the Second didn't let the intelligent position of his advisor sway him. Humanity's militarum is split. They must fight their own in their outer region. Their forces are too divided to mount a proper defense campaign with their impenetrable core galaxy. The mockery in the aspiring emperor's voice was apparent. Billions of years isolated from the throne, billions of years forced to live as a commoner in a human empire. The degradation of his armor was unbearable. It would all end today. If you insist, sir, it is only my duty to serve. Ready our fleets to establish a diplomatic channel with the humans. I want to see the shock on their faces as I make their empire crumble before their very eyes. How much longer do we have to decide? The room went dead silent for multiple seconds. Less than an hour. Our defenses around Andromeda have been destroyed. The insanity has spread to uncountable amounts. If we do this, we kill everything outside the shielded region for good. There'll be no possibility of a cure. If we don't, it could spread through the gate. We can't let the multiverse be infected by our experiment. This would be genocide in the highest degree. We can't seriously be considering it. Would you rather your family be turned into a wrenching mass of insaners for all eternity? There is no cure for this affliction. It occurs in the highest dimensions of consciousness. The suffering is eternal. It would be cruel to allow them to continue living... The Empire has stood for a billion years. Do we really want to end our legacy with a genocide so absolute that not even a single strand of codones will survive the slaughter? No life will be left to save. Unless we utilize the Goronoshi Project. That project is insane. If anything goes wrong within the hundred million years of hibernation, the weapons will need to be fired a second time. I know. 
That would destroy our interdimensional link. Everything that survived will be doomed to an entropic demise. It is no better than that demise of eternal torment with your own mind. The rumor was once again silent. Implant the Goronoshi. If everything goes well, we can. The Hatclons have declared independence. Breeds are attacking human population within their proclaimed borders. Is it time? The silence was deafening. Why have the humans not responded yet? The room of advisors was just as surprised as the Emperor himself. We have no idea, sir. Human ship movements detected. Tyrellus sat up in his straw. Where are they moving? They're, uh... They're retreating to Earth and Zion, sir. They run back to their cradles. One natural home, one wretched abomination of steel. We can allow Earth to survive, but that horrid mass of metal, it must be destroyed. Dispatch our fleet to Zion. Cut their head right off of their shoulders. Humans have begun moving, sir. What do you mean, moving? They're being teleported to Zion. All of them, outside of Seoul. To defend the gargantuan world by sheer number. I don't know why, sir. The room was silent for a moment. Just, what were these humans up to? Massive gravitational anomalies detected. I count five. No, ten. Twenty. One hundred. What is going on? The Emperor bellowed in fury. The humans have unveiled no less than a hundred supermassive black holes. How is that even possible? The screeching of alarms alerted the room to the first signs of their impending doom. Each black hole has gone active. What does that mean? The galaxy has just been turned into the most extreme quasar in the universe has ever seen. The energy is traveling and faster than light. Sensors are being knocked offline. The robotic voice of the alarm wailed out with extreme volume. Radiation alert intensifying. The Emperor muttered his last words. By the stars, what have they done? The twisting pair of magnetars that protect the Genoshi project swirl violently. Their immense magnetic field prevents the gargantuan bursts of the human superweapons from killing the precious cargo that is encompassed deep within the orbital planet's crust. The human construct that amplifies the power of the magnetars is forced to work under immense pressure. Its secondary task of keeping the orbiting magnetars from colliding is also put under extreme strain. The machine must not fail. The fate of humanity's legacy hangs in the balance. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.